In this video, I'll be discussing the Bordeaux producers that were classified as fourth growths in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. Back in 1855, at the request of Napoleon III, the French government ordered that the wines of Bordeaux be classified in advance of an exposition to be held in Paris. This was so that the best French wines could be highlighted at the exposition. The classification covered both the Medoc and Grave, so only the left bank Bordeaux producers were eligible for inclusion in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. The criteria for the classification was based largely on transaction prices over an extended period of time. Given the fact that the 1855 classification remains largely unchanged and is quite accurate, especially at the high end, even today, it may surprise you that the classification was accomplished in only about two weeks. In all, there were 61 Bordeaux producers that were classified in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, and of these 61 producers, 10 of them were classified as fourth growths. While you oftentimes hear people say that a certain producer should either move up or down in the 1855 classification, for the most part, the fourth growths are largely where they should be. One of them would probably drop, and there are several of them that would probably move up a bit, but not by much, maybe to third growths for a few of them. So for the most part, they are where they should be. Another thing to note about the fourth growth producers is that half of them are from saint julien these are some of the best sources for value in all of Bordeaux. And in fact, a number of the fourth growth producers are producing outstanding wine that flies under the radar a little bit. So this is definitely a fertile source for bargain hunters. Chateau Saint-Pierre is one of the smallest Bordeaux producers in Saint-Julien. It has only about 17 hectares of vineyards. These vineyards are planted to 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Merlot, and 10% Cabernet Franc, and many of the top vines are around 50 years old. These vines are also located in an excellent neighborhood, as many of them are located next to Ducru Bocayou and Chateau Béchevel. Saint-Pierre made heavy investments in the cellars and in the vineyards that began paying off with the 2005 vintage. So for this producer, I would not look for anything older than 2005, and if you're looking for one with a bit of age on it, I would definitely focus on 2009 and 2010, both of which were outstanding. And if you're looking for a more recent vintage, I would definitely focus on 2015, 2016, and 2018, 19, and 20. I checked, and the Wine Searcher average price is around $60 for the 2020 vintage. So this is certainly an excellent value. And this is definitely one of those high quality to price ratio wines that I was mentioning in the introduction. And Saint-Pierre is a wine that you can enjoy young with a healthy decant. However, it does get much better if you can wait about 8 to 10 years. So certainly if you're able to find some of the 2009 and 2010, those should be in a prime drinking window right now. And if you get the 2015 or 2016, you won't have too long to wait. Saint-Julien-based Chateau Talbot has one of the largest vineyards in Bordeaux with an impressive 107 hectares of vines. 102 of these hectares are dedicated to red wine. Interestingly, these vineyards are also located all in one block, so they're not spread out in a number of parcels across the Appalachian, as with many producers. These vineyards are planted to 67% Cabernet Sauvignon, 27% Merlot, 4.5% Petit Verdot, and 1.5% Cabernet Franc. The vineyard is also in an excellent area as it's located close to the Leovilles, Leoville Poifere, Leoville Barton, and Leoville Lescats. Talbot produces about 25,000 cases of wine per year, so you should be able to track some down without any difficulty. Unlike Saint-Pierre, this is one that has a reputation for aging well also, so it may be worth taking a flyer on some older vintages. In 2016, however, Talbot completed a complete renovation of the cellar, and they also began to make some changes in the vineyard that have resulted in improvements in the wine. For example, they're harvesting later, they're using a more strict selection, and they're reducing yields. Consequently, my recommendation is to focus on some of the more recent vintages for Talbot, such as 2018, 2019, and 2020. As but one example, the 2019 Talbot was the number four Wine Spectator Wine of the Year in the top 100 wines. And this impressive wine had a 95-point score and sold for only around $65 a bottle. 
while this one may be hard to track down, 2018 and 2020 were certainly very close, if not equal, in terms of quality. So you should definitely be able to find one of those if you can't find the 2019. For those of you who lack patience, and I know a lot of my viewers fit that description, you'll be pleased to note that this is a wine you can enjoy when it's young, with a healthy decant and preferably some food, but it is better if you can give it 7 to 8 years of age, and in top vintages it would be better to give it 10 to 12 or so. San Julian, based Brenner du Cru, traces its roots all the way back to 1680. At that time, it was part of the very, very large Bechevel estate. Bechevel's owner died at that time, however, and some of the property was sold off to pay off his debts, and so several new estates were created, including Brenner du Cru. Brenner du Cru has about 60 hectares of vineyards. The vines average 35 years of age, and the vineyards are planted to 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 28% Merlot, 4% Petit Verdot, and 3% Cabernet Franc. Bernard du Cru is a family-owned business. The family that owns it acquired it back in 1988, and following the acquisition, they made substantial improvements in the winery and in the vineyards. These investments paid off handsomely beginning with the 2000 vintage. Since the 2000 vintage, Bernard de Cru has been one of the very best values in all of saint julien which is an appellation that's known for value. The 2020, for example, was selling for an average of $50 a bottle through a wine searcher search, which is certainly an exceptional value for a wine of this caliber. Better still, this producer makes about 25,000 cases of this wine per year, so you should be able to locate it easily. This is a wine that's been so consistent, you don't really need to worry too much about vintage. However, you still can't go wrong buying standout vintages like 2009 and 10, and 2015, 16, 18, 19, and 20. This is a wine that's a bit more approachable than many fourth growth Bordeaux producers because it has a little bit of elegance and freshness to it. Nevertheless, it is still better with seven to eight years of additional bottle age and will probably peak a few years after that. Located in Poyac, Chateau Duart Milon was acquired by the Rothschild family in the early 1960s. At that time, the estate was in disarray. For the next 30 years or so, the Rothschild family embarked on a radical overhaul of the vineyards and the cellars. Today, Duhart Milon has 76 hectares of vineyards that are planted to two-thirds Cabernet Sauvignon and one-third Merlot. This is one of the very few classified gross that has just two Bordeaux varieties in their blend. These vineyards are located in northern Poyac, close to Mouton Rothschild. They face north, and so it's a little bit cooler here. That helps to explain the higher percentage of Merlot for a Poyac-based winery. This is another producer that it's hit its stride more recently, and so if you're looking for an older vintage, I would probably go to 2009 and 2010. This producer had a big increase in quality beginning with 2018, and so you certainly can't go wrong with 2018 and 19, but then beginning with the 2020 vintage, they also completed a renovation in the cellar, and they have some new winemaking equipment. This new winemaking equipment allows them to vinify on a parcel-by-parcel -parcel basis. And this is all the rage in Bordeaux currently and what the top producers are doing. So certainly for 2020, you can tell a little bit more precision in the wine. And I would expect that there'd be another big quality jump going forward. And this producer's wines for 2020 sell for around $85 a bottle. Due to the relatively high percentage of Merlot in this wine, you can enjoy this one on the younger side but it's better with at least 8 to 10 years of bottle age. Margot Bay Chateau Puget is probably the most obscure fourth growth Bordeaux producer, in part due to its small size. They produce only around 5,000 cases of wine per year. This producer has about 10 hectares of vines that are planted to 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 30% Merlot, and 10% Cabernet Franc. The vines average an impressive 50 years of age. Most of the time on this channel, when I'm discussing a wine, it's a wine that I've tasted before and have personal experience with. In this case, however, I have never tasted Chateau Puget. Based on my research, however, I understand that the scores are typically in the high 80s, so not quite to the 90-point threshold. As such, it's a little bit under the radar and less heralded than many of the fourth-growth Bordeaux producers. But the price is also correspondingly lower and I found the 2020 vintage selling for an average price of around $37 per bottle on Wine Searcher. If any of you have any experience tasting Chateau Puget, 
I would welcome your thoughts in the comments below. Located in the Haut Medoc, Chateau Latour Carnet was purchased by Bernard Magray back in 1999. Amazingly, he improved the size of the vineyards from 44 hectares to an impressive 190 hectares today. This is now one of the largest vineyard holdings in all of Bordeaux. The vineyards are fairly close to some of the top estates in Saint-Julien. Unusually for a left bank producer, the vineyard is planted to 56% Merlot. Then there's only 39% Cabernet Sauvignon, 4% Cabernet Franc, and 1% Petit Verdot. 80 to 90% of the wine matures in 60% New French Oak, and the rest matures in clay amphora. There's also a special cuvee called Servitude Volontaire. This special cuvee is made in very small amounts, only about 500 cases or so per year, and it's sold only in Bernard Magret's retail stores in Bordeaux and Paris. La Tour Carnet has been a fairly consistent producer over the years, but unless you can find a 2009 vintage, you're probably better off buying a vintage from 2018, 2019, or 2020. I found this one selling for only about $33 a bottle, so it's definitely got a friendly price point as well. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Located in saint Estef, Chateau Lafon Roche has about 41 hectares of vineyards that are planted to 57% Cabernet Sauvignon, 37% Merlot, 4% Petit Verdot, and 2% Cabernet Franc. The vines average 37 years of age, but they have some impressive old vine Merlot that's 80 years old. The vineyards for Lafon Roche are in a high-class neighborhood, as their neighbors include Chateau Lafitte Rothschild and Costa de Scornel. They finished an overhaul of the vineyards about six to seven years ago, and this improvement in the vineyards has paid dividends as the 2015 through 2020 vintages are exceptional. My personal favorite is 2020, and the weakest of those is probably 2017, but you really can't go wrong with any of them. Better still, this is a producer that you can enjoy within the first 10 years after it's released, although I would probably give it at least a few years of additional bottle age before you start digging in. Margot-based Priory Lachine was acquired by a negotiant back in 1999, and they've subsequently replanted most of their vineyards and implemented sustainable farming practices. This producer has around 78 hectares of vineyards, but they're scattered all over Bordeaux in about 150 different parcels, so the quality may vary. They do have around 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 45% Merlot, and about 5% Petit Verdot. They removed all the Cabernet Franc, so they no longer have that in their blends. This producer makes about 25,000 cases of wine per year. This is one that's generally better with at least 8 to 10 years of additional bottle age on it. This is another producer where you don't want to go back too far when it comes to buying back old vintages. I would probably not buy anything older than 2015. And certainly 2018, 2019, and 2020 are very strong as well. In terms of price, I've seen this one selling for a little bit more than $40 a bottle but you can sometimes get it for less than that if you look for futures. Margot-based Marquis du Terme is a historic producer that traces its roots way back to the 1600s. And in fact, it was well known in the 1700s and even mentioned in the diaries of President Thomas Jefferson. Marquis du Terme completed an overhaul of its cellars and winemaking facilities in 2009. It has 40 hectares of vineyards that are planted to 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 33% Merlot, and 7% Petit Verdot. The vines average around 35 years of age or so. The vineyards are located fairly close to prominent producer Rosan Segla. Marquis du Terme was certified organic in 2017. It uses somewhere between one-third to one-half new French oak to mature its wines and also matures some of its wines in concrete egg. This is a producer that hit stride more recently and so I definitely wouldn't buy anything earlier than 2015. But 2015 through 2020 are very good, although I would probably pass on 2017 if you can find one of the other vintages. saint julien Bay chateau Bay chevelle is a historic producer that dates way back to the 1400s. The name means lower the sails. It is so named because back in the 1500s, when the property was owned by the Duke of Epernon, 
ships that sailed by had to lower their sails as a sign of respect. Baishabel has around 90 hectares of vineyards that average about 30 years of age. They're not all in one block, and they're kind of scattered about. About one-third of them are farmed organically. There's around 52% Cabernet Sauvignon, 40% Merlot, and the rest is divided up between Petit Verdot and Cabernet Franc. Béchevel produces around 25,000 cases of wine, so you should definitely be able to track this one down. Currently, they use a fairly strict selection, as only about half the fruit makes it into the top wine. Compare this with their 1982 vintage, for example, which had 95% of the fruit go into the top wine. I had this wine a year or two ago, and it was already way past peak, so certainly they've drastically improved their practices, and they're making some of the best wine that they've ever produced. You can definitely buy with confidence any vintage of Béchevel from probably 2014 through the present, but 2016 and 2020 are particularly outstanding. In fact, I tried the 2020 vintage for the first time on Futures during On Premour, and despite the fact that it can be a challenge to drink Bordeaux when it's that young, this one was really impressive, and it was actually somewhat enjoyable and approachable despite its youth. This one will cost you a little bit more, however, the 2020 Vintage, for example, averages around $115 a bottle on Wine Searcher currently. Nevertheless, it is a high-quality estate and certainly one of the top fourth-growth Bordeaux producers. If you're interested in learning more about the 1855 classification of Bordeaux, please be sure to watch my video on the third-growth Bordeaux producers.